some time, we've been treated to an outpouring of what only can be described as anti-Christmas literature, specifically a cult favorite tactic used by the cults. But even the pagan world media and Christians are telling us about how the holiday is pagan in origin and bad and should not be celebrated by Christians. These opinions are backed up with some rather unusual and curious fantasies masquerading as historical facts. The following video is intended only to re-examine popular historical claims of the origins of Christmas and to provide further discussion concerning some of the so-called facts offered in some anti-Christian publications. St. Nicholas was one of the chief bishops who convened the Council of Nicaea in 325 CE. If you want to see the work of St. Nicholas up on big screen, so there's this great film that's coming out by Mel Gibson, and you can, you can watch the film and you can see on big screen why Christians massacred Jews throughout history. Realize that John and other parts of the New Testament that, he, that, that St. Nicholas was also involved in editing are the texts that paved the way for the Holocaust, right? It was St. Nicholas and friends who taught people it was the evil Jews who killed their God. The Council of Nicaea did not rule on the canon. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. John chapter 8 verse 44 only refers to some Jews, not Jews in general, so the implication that it is anti-Jewish in some wrong sense is dubious. Officially, Christmas is the celebration, it's the commemoration, it's the day when we celebrate the birth of Jesus. That is, the God who came to earth once and for all to do away with Judaism. He announced that the Old Testament is null and void, that mitzvahs need no longer be kept that the Jews have been abandoned because they're an evil, sinful people. And that now that they've been abandoned, there's a new chosen people, the Christians, and there's a new Bible, the New Testament. And the Jews have no business from now on ever observing their, their, their religion. Their religion is dead and gone. That is the, the, the meaning behind the celebration of December the 25th. That's the meaning that a Catholic would attach to it or a Protestant would attach to it. The New Testament's references to the Jewish law as a curse are not meant to condemn the law in its entirety or its original intent but rather are meant to highlight how the law condemns us as sinners. Point number three, Christmas is a lie. Jesus definitely was not born on December 25th. Even a, even a Christian will tell you that. Despite what Kielman tells us, there are early Christian traditions involving Jesus' birth on December 25th. His lecture says nothing about Julius Africanus, early Christian belief that Jesus was both conceived and crucified on March 25th making December 25th, the birth date, etc. Often when I give this talk, people get angry with me. And they say, like, Kelman, cut it out. Like, you know, we just want to have fun. You know, like, you know, we don't need to know all of this stuff. We're, we're, we don't intend any of this. We're not celebrating Christmas because of what Christmas means. It's just a nice time when people get together with good cheer and are, are nice to each other and they give presents and they celebrate and it's fun and you're ruining the whole thing. I understand that sens sensibility. I understand why people feel that way. To people who feel that way, I would just ask the following question. There's a holiday which is not celebrated widely in America. It's only a very, very small population in America that celebrates April the 20th. There's a slightly larger German, Austrian, Polish population that celebrates that day. April the 20th is Hitler Day. It's the day on which Hitler was born, and it's celebrated by neo-Nazis around the world. Imagine that April the 20th became a more popular holiday, and slowly, as its historical roots were forgotten, it spread throughout popular culture. Kielman repeatedly refers to the raping, murdering, etc. of Jews in association with Christmas, but the origins of the holiday and the vast majority of its celebrations are far removed from such behavior. 
The sort of reasoning he applies to Christmas could also be applied to the pagan associations of our system of government, our language, our economic system, etc., including many such things that Jewish people utilize.